How's it going, everybody? On air with JT. I am here with the one and only Mount Joy, a very talented band that I've uh, been a big fan for for almost five years now. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to sit down with you and, and a- actually ask you a few questions. And uh, uh, again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, so one of the first questions I have is, how many times have you performed in Boston? And what do you think about the city? Oh, man. Um, I don't know exactly, but I'm going to guess probably like five or six times at this point. Okay. Um, and I mean, I have a special, you know, place in my heart for Boston. I, I went to school here in Northeastern. Um, and then, you know, I lived here for a year after that. Uh, I worked at a restaurant called Trade. I think it might still be here. Okay. Um, I think so. So yeah, I, you know, I have some ties to Boston and it, it means a lot for me to come back. I have some people who, you know, going to school here inspired me to be doing what I'm doing. So it's always fun to get back here. That's awesome. Yeah. And we're talking about that off camera as well. Um, so another question I have to ask you is, uh, here we go. So I found about, I found about you guys on a placement on like, I think a TV show or something with Jenny Jenkins. And ever since then been a huge fan. Um, so leading on to that, I have to ask you, who are your main, if you could list a couple of your main influences uh, to help you get to the point where you are now, or even just to, to going back to the early days of starting the band and, and trying to get a sound? You mean like musical influences? Like uh, yes, yeah. Um, you know, uh, I think there's a lot. Like, And I think one of the cool things about this band is that there's, you know, five of us, all of us have slightly different influences and things that we grew up listening to. For me, I was um, into, you know, a lot of 60s and 70s folk music, like Paul Simon, um, Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, um, then like soul stuff, like staple singers, and then like jam band stuff. I'm a big deadhead. I like the Grateful Dead. So all this classic throwback stuff. Um, And then, you know, Jackie comes from a classical, classically trained pianist vibe and you know like you go across the board everyone comes from a slightly different place and i think it sort of hopefully gives us you know a unique sound in the end that's awesome i really uh appreciate the uh the honesty on the different types of influences that you've had and and how it's brought you to this day um another question dream collaboration if you could pick any artist band who, who, who do you think would fit the best in terms of chemistry and, and, and the creative process of, of making a, a really good song? You know, I, I don't know because I don't know some of these people's creative process. Yeah. Processes, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but in terms of just pie in the sky, assuming it would work. Um, and there's a few. I mean, uh, Frank Ocean is probably like everyone's He's dream collaborator. But I just... I just Every recording he makes is so cool, and I feel like it also still has a heart in it and a soul, you know, whereas, like, I feel like there's a lot of really cool-sounding recordings and people making cool recordings that, like, maybe I can't feel the song or the song doesn't hit me as hard. So mm. someone that I look up to for sure. But then, you know, like Grateful Dead or something like that would be, would be yeah. obviously, uh, they're missing some key members, but that would be cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so what was it like performing on several late night talk shows? You know, you performed on, I believe, Kimmel, James Corden, um, and I'm missing one more, uh, Seth Meyers. Okay. Uh, what, what was it like, you know, from starting a band and then now you're on national television, you know, performing on these late night talk shows? It's nerve wracking. Yeah, I'm sure. That much. Yeah, yeah, I can like, only imagine. Uh, but it's fun, you know, I mean, uh, it feels good to... You know, I don't know, you grow up even just living in, a, in America, you're watching these shows and seeing those people. So then you do have kind of a moment when you're there, you're like, whoa, we're about to be on this show, mm. um, which is cool. But the day um, to describe it is like, it's pretty rough. Like you're, you're there in the morning and then as the band, you sound check. Um, and then like, you know, in football, they have like icing the kicker. You definitely get iced pretty hard. So you sound check at like maybe like 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, all right, sounds good. We're ready for you to go. Yeah. But then you go at like 4 or 5 p.m. So you're okay. just waiting, waiting and waiting. And, you know, I think that's when the nerves kick in the most is when you're like 
waiting to do a thing. Yeah. So eh, definitely for us, it's a, a little nerve wracking, but it's definitely cool and rewarding. Yeah, I can only imagine. Uh, so, what was the creative process? If you can just explain, you don't have to get into it that much, but of making the, you know the newest album, Orange Blood. Yeah, so it was made, uh, or at least a lot of it was made during the pandemic. Um, so Sam and I were um, fortunate that we were able to rent uh, on this woman's property not far from where we live outside of uh, in Philadelphia area, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, got like a little barn on her property and, sh- and we would just show up there every day and had a whiteboard. We were working through songs and uh, once we felt like we... Um, you know, ready to record it. We got our, our producer, Caleb Nelson, who just did an amazing job. And he, he flew out and recorded some of it actually in the barn. Um, some of it was recorded in Los Angeles, and then some of it was recorded at a couple of studios in Philadelphia as well. So it was oh, really wow. just, a, you know, it was a bit tricky because moving around, at least for parts of it during the pandemic, as everyone knows, was tricky. Flying was tricky mm. um, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, a lot of it was made just, uh, or at least born out of, uh, working on some stuff in, in a barn in Pennsylvania. And, and that leads me to the next, uh, question. So you had the opportunity to go on a tour with the Luminaires. Obviously it was kind of cut short with COVID and everything. What was it like working with, uh, someone so talented, you know, talented band like the Luminaires? Like, what was that like? Was it like surreal or was it like... It was definitely surreal. Yeah. I think um, they were great. Uh, definitely learned a lot from them, uh, watching them play basketball and hockey arenas. Mm-hmm. I think that for me, I'm a big sports fan. Yeah, so me too. <laughs> that was like a pretty surreal aspect of it. You know, you're like showing up and throwing your bags down in like a visitor's locker room of like, you know, the garden or something like that. We didn't play yeah. the garden. Someone wants to fact check me. But we, uh, <laughs> no, we played a lot of big teams that I've watched arenas and you kind of step out on the stage and you know you definitely learn something from a, a group that does that every night um, mm. and, and it's, it's fun to watch and they're they were kind to us and it was a good time that's awesome so uh probably one of the last questions I have I usually do this with all the uh, musicians that I have the opportunity to interview so I have a, a few songs that are my favorite and I want to know what you think is the best song or what you pref- what you prefer to pre- pre- perform or or whatever like that mm-hmm. so I, I love sheep I love Julia I love Mount Joy I love Astro Van Every Holiday, Rearrange Us, and obviously Jenny Jenkins. Okay. Um, <laughs> I know it's a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. First of all, that's awesome. Uh, so, my favorite one to perform out of those, um, it's tough, but I, I do I do really like to perform Astro Van. I feel like it's just this song that, for me, came out of like a joke in my in my bedroom in Los Angeles, like you know, at the very beginning of this band and to see what it's become and hear people singing it back and um, it always feels pretty special. But then in terms of like, like songs, I don't know that I'm more proud of from a songwriting standpoint or something. I occasionally like when I hear Every Holiday, um, I think that's a song I'm really proud of from like a songwriting standpoint. It's a great song. Um, And just captures like, you know, a specific moment in time for me as well. So yeah. And, awesome. and shout out to Adam Melcher as well because he helped write that song. So proud oh, wow. of that one. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, one last question. So anything you want to plug? Uh, I know you still are you're on tour. Um, you know, obviously get his get Mount Joy's newest album, uh, Orange Blood. Uh, anything? Anything else? Yeah, I don't know. We're on tour. We have uh, two weeks left on this run. I think there are a few tickets available at some of the shows. So check that out and. Um, yeah, check out our new album, Orange Blood. We uh, it's going pretty great. Sold out tonight in Boston, and okay. yeah, we're we're super excited. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you, man. Appreciate yeah, you. You're the best, man. I Thanks. appreciate it. You're listening to On Air with JT, and we're here with Mount Joy. Thank you so awesome. much, man. Hey, I appreciate man. it. Appreciate you. I was a little nervous. Dude, <laughs> I haven't really. done an interview in over a year. I took oh. a break from my podcast, and this was the first interview that I've you're done. You're back, dude. Yeah. You're back with a vengeance. <laughs> uh,